Hello and welcome back to an academy. So let's crack me. Myself, Dr. Muskan Chaudhary, and today we'll discuss about uh, mycobacteria. So, starting with the Unacademy, as you know, Unacademy is the India's largest learning platform where you can assess both live as well as recorded sessions and learning from the India's topmost educators for any medical examination, be it NEET, UG, or the NEET PG paper. Now you can compete in the live T and Ds and test your preparation with a highly competitive quizzes that are being held and study on the device and benefit from our exclusive, exclusive chance of watching our classes on uh, big, uh, bigger screens and assess up to 25,000 of the MCQ and uh, it's our it's it's like a uh, kind of many three to two at least 50 to 100 MCQs per day just to cover down the 25,000 MCQs from all the high yield topics. Because uh, repetitive uh, theory, uh, repetition, and the uh, and the practice of the MCQs are very important. Printed and digital notes that are provided. Uh, Icon subscriptions uh, is uh, there for the students because Prep Letter and the uh, Academy has come together, and we get the clinical and the integrated essentials, the video lectures, and the Q banks uh, with rapid revision snapshots and the 2021 dream notes. With the well structured live sessions, recorded classes, and the Q banks of 25,000 MCQs with competitive TNDs and comprehensive printed digital notes. Right, for the need PG for two years, it will cost you around 1500 per month, around 36,000 for two years. And please do use my code that is Muskan 10 to get 10% of the code. On the icon subscriptions, it will cost you around 2438 per month for 24 months, and for 18 months, it will cost you around 20, uh, 2875 and 1875 for 36 months. Now, raise a hand feature that is something new, and you can personalize and make your sessions highly interactive uh, and drive engagement with the quizzes and the doubt solving sessions. With enable the interactive and the doubt solving, one on one doubt solving with your favorite educator. 25,000 high yield MCQs with based on the latest examination pattern, including the detailed explanations. And you might know that is more than 10 to get 10% of the discount. Interactive live classes where you attend the live class, participate in the live chat, and get doubts cleared, and can do the polling for the learners, respond to the poll for a better understanding, and raise a hand feature to talk to a favorite educator and get your doubts resolved in real time. You will get the notification for the classes that are going to be held on the class as well as on the YouTube, so you get notified for it. Lecture notes that are being provided and assess the recorded sessions anywhere and everywhere and save your time for those students who are working and find it difficult to prepare. They can actually watch the recorded sessions when they can't keep, uh, uh, can't watch the live sessions. Okay, for 24 month subscriptions, four month is totally free, and with 12 month subscriptions, two month is totally free. And use my that is scan 10 to get 10 percent discount All right, so we'll start with mycobacteria. We'll start with the now we'll start with the mycobacteria. We'll start with bacteria tuberculosis. The first point is that they are what they are acid fast bacilli. They are acid fast. That is, they have the ability. They have the ability retain retain the decolorizer. 
all right and that depends on the that is because of the that depends on mycolic acid that is due to the mycolic acid content they retain the decolorizer and how they do appear they appear they appear the purple pink they appear pink against against dark blue black background okay so how do they appear they appear pink against the dark blue black background now second factor is that of the violence factor and they what have one is that they have the code factor they have the code factor and the lipo arabi no manon okay one important point is that that mycobacteria they are they are acid fast fatty like and bacilli and it is due to the it is due to the presence of mycolic acid content and they retain the decolorizer and they retain the decolorizer and the important point that they have the code factor and the lipo arabinon uh, arabinomenon that is the violence factor for the mycobacteria now one thing is important to remember that in children in children that it is mainly the lower lobe of the lungs lower lobe of the lungs are in right and that is the Gons focus will come to the images one by one. Plus, lymph lymphadenopathy. All right. And in the post primary TB, upper lobes are involved. And there are two focus that is one is what assignments focus and another what was asthma's focus and we will come to that that what are these that what are these now acid fastness is due to the it is due to the mycolic acid and it is due to the integrity of the cell wall integrity of the cell wall and these are the examples of the these are the examples of the mycolic acid that uh, these are examples of the acid fast bacilli that is a mycobacteria nocardia cryptosporidium rhodococcus and the cyclospora spore isospora sperm head tenia saginata legionella and the hooklet of the high dietesis these are what these are the acid fast examples now, first we'll come to the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, which includes which includes the M. T. M. bovis and M. africanum and the M. microti. All right. Now, coming first, coming first to the mycobacterium tuberculosis, they are what they are what curved, long beaded, and less uniformly stained with rough buff and Tough colonies and they show what they show what two gonic growth. Each of the factors will come to one by one. Now, next thing, next thing, we already read that in the post primary tuberculosis, post primary tuberculosis, it is the upper lobe that is involved, upper lobe that is involved. And subplural involvement, subplural focus that is what Simon's focus, and the another is what bilateral influx clavicular vision that is. Asthma's focus. Okay. So in the post-primary tuberculosis, we have one is the upper lobe involvement with the subpleural focus and the bilateral infraclavicular lesion. That is what that is. Asthma's focus. That is what Asthma's focus. Now, coming to the skin tuberculosis, what is the most common primary lesion? Is what it is. Lupus. Lupus vulgaris. It is what lupus vulgaris. So skin tuberculosis, the primary lesion, the most common primary lesion is what lupus vulgaris, and this is what this is apple jelly nodules. We got apple jelly shape, apple jelly like nodules, and the second most common. 
what is the second most common lesion the most common primary lesion is the lupus vulgaris infection and the most common second second most common lesion is what sacrofiloderma okay. is the second most common lesion now coming to gi tb what is the most common site what is the most common site? that is what fecal junction okay. in the gi tb what is the second most common lesion it is what elio fecal junction in the skin the most common primary lesion is what First, vulgaris and second one is the sector of and the post primary TB it is the upper lobe that is involved with the Simon's focus and the Esmond's focus. Now, coming to the next, coming to the next, other than this, the bone TB is also there, the bone involvement. We see the involvement of the spine, the most common that is the involvement of the spine in the that what spine that we see. Now, coming next to the Laboratory diagnosis. Okay, so coming to the next to the laboratory diagnosis, the first we do, the first we do is the term examination. Okay, that is two sputum samples are taken. And these are what one is what one is on spot sample, and another one is what early early morning sample is taken. So for the sputum examination, two samples are taken. One is the on spot sample, and another one is what the early morning sample. And Petroff's method is used. Petroff's method, it is what a method of decontamination and concentration of the sputum. So, just it helps us for the diagnosis of the microbe. That is what Petroff's method is used for the concentration. Concentration and Okay. So, for the lab diagnosis, we first take the sputum, we do the sputum examination and we take the two sputum samples, one at the on spot and another we take the early morning sample and for by the Petroff's method, we do the concentration and the decontamination of the sputum. <laughs> now, next we do, next we do is a ZN staining. That is what zeal nensel staining that we do for the sputum. All right, and we take we take the sputum smear and we stain it for carbol fusion. Then we do the intermittent heat. At 24 H2SO4 is what the decolorizer that we add, which is the decolorizer that we add and add methylene blue stain. All right, so we add the carbol fusion, which is a primary stain that we give, and the intermittent heat. We do the intermittent heat, and after that, we add the decolorizer that is what that is 20% of the H2SO4. 20% of the H2SO4 and we add what? Methylene blue. Methylene blue. And what we we'll see? We see the blue back, background with pink to red bacilli. Alright, so this is important to remember that what we see in the Z stain, we see what the blue back, uh, blue background with the pink to red bacilli. So blue background with pink bacilli. Now, other than this, other than this, 
We use media that is what the LG media. We see the growth on the LG media, Lovenstein, Johnson's media, that is a selective media for what mycobacterium tuberculosis. That is what Lovenstein. Lovenstein's Jensen media that is XRU or solidification. XRU is for the solidification and and selective media agent that we add. What is malachite? And this malachite green color gives what? Gives the green color to the important one. Please remember. Okay, what is the selective media agent that we add? Is the malachite green, which gives a green color. Uh, yeah, and the eggs are used for the of. So therefore, it is what? It is what? Green color media. Now. And what type of appearance that we super see for the microbiome tuberculosis? It is what it is rough, buff, and tough colonies. Get what? Rough, buff, and tough colonies. Very important we get what? Rough, buff, and tough colonies. And for the microbiome lab, we get what? Smooth colonies. So the characteristic appearance of the microbiome tuberculosis on the LJ media is rough, buff, and tough colonies. Rough appearance of the media is due to what? Is due to due to the wrinkled appearance, due to the wrinkled appearance of the colony, and the tough is due to because they are adherent and difficult to remove. The buff colonies, it is due to the yellow brown colonies. Okay, so the selective media that we use for the growth of the microvitam tuberculosis is what the LG media and X are used for the solidification. Selective media agent that we use malachite green and malachite green gives a green color appearance to the media. And the, uh, it will be rough, buff, and the tough colonies that is a wrinkled and adherent colonies that are yellow brown, yellow brown in the appearance. Now, what is the next method we use for the for the diagnosis? What is the lab diagnosis that we use next? Is what microbiome tuberculosis methods that we do. Other than this, what else? We'll get into detail in the slides when we'll read the slides in the detail. First, we need to cover the important short points about the MTB and uh, the lab that we'll read about. Then we'll cover up the slides. Now, MTB, my PCR method next is what? Gene expert RIF. That is what is RIF? That is detection of the famicin resistance. So we by the gene expert we want we need to see the resistance for the famicin that is for the, the identification of the tuberculosis and next is that is a nucleic acid amplification test we do and it is what is cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test other than this we also do the line top assays microton tuberculosis pcr with multi drug resistance detection okay so we one is that we use the pcr methods we use the gene export methods, CB NAT for the nucleic acid amplification test, line prop assay, and the MTB PCR with multi drug resistance detection. Next, we use next we use pantefiron 
टी बी फोल्ड ऐसे और राइट एंड इट इज इट इज वॉट इट इज इग्रा बेस्ड मैथड दैट इज इंटरफोर कामा इंटरफोरन गामा रिलीज ऐसे इंटरफ्रोन गामा रिलीज ऐसे दैट इज माइकोबैक्टीरियल एंटीजें क्वांटिफिकेशन ऑफ द ट्यूबोक्लोसिस दैट वी डू बाय इग्रा दैट इज इंटरफ्रोन बेस्ड गामा रिलीज ऐसे एंड माइकोबैक्टीरियल एंटीजें दे आर स्टिमुलेटेड एंड ब्लड सेंसिटाइज्ड lymphocyte they get what they get activated by the mycobacter antigens and once the due to the mycobacter antigens the t lymphocytes are activated they will release what they will release what the interferons the activation of the interferons and we measure interferon gamma activity that is what activity of sensitized t lymphocyte so what we do when remember that it is igra based that is interferon gamma release as once the macrobacteria antigen has activated the t lymphocyte they will release the gamma and will actually measure what the interferon gamma activities and with the help of it prior exposure will be known what will the drawback drawback of igra is that we cannot differentiate we cannot differentiate into whether it is active tb or latent tb so interferon gamma release assay what we do we actually measure the gamma activity by the sensitized t lymphocyte but the drawback is that we cannot differentiate whether it is active or the sensitized t assigned to sensitized t lymphocyte are in the active tuberculosis or in the latent tb next we use oramin oramin rhodamine staining next we use oramin rhodamine staining okay and it is what it is fluorescence based stain and done in case of in case of load and drawback is that false positive false positive chances are high okay So what is the next stain that we use for the laboratory diagnosis is the oramin rhodamine staining, and we use the it is fluorescence based staining done in case of the heavy load of the disease. And the drawback is that that false positive cases are high. Now coming to the next that is what tuberculin test. and what is the other name for the tuberculin test it, it is what it is on tox test that we do and we use important question that what we use we use 0.1 ml of ppd that is purified protein derivative Okay. In the tuberculin Montex test, what we do, we use 0.1 ml of the PP, that is the purified protein derivative, and it is injected into where into the flexor aspect 
of four arm. Okay, that is 0.1 ml of PPD into the flexor aspect of what four arm. After three days. We measure what? We measure the induration. That is what we measure the diameter of the hardness of the skin. That is we measure the induration after 3 days. If it is less than 5 mm, then it is what? It is negative. And 5 to 10 mm is what? Equivocal. And more than 5, more than 10 mm. Is what positive so what we do in the tuberculin in the tuberculin next test 0.1 ml of the pe purified protein derivative we actually inject into the flexor aspect of the forearm and we measure after three days the induration if it is less than 5 mm then it is negative 5 to 10 will be equivocal and more than 10 will be positive now what is that in case of the false positive or the false negative the false positive we get where in the recent false positive in the recent BC vaccination and where else atypical mycobacterial infections. Okay. So, false positive cases are seen here. The false positive cases are seen in recent vaccination and the atypical mycobacterial cases. And where do we get the false negative? That is case of the HIV positive person, case of the advanced stage of the HIV. Failure tuberculosis, malignancy, and what else? Immunosuppression person. Okay, so typically Montex text is actually we do 0.1 ml of PP uh, that is injected into the forearm aspect or uh, or uh, flexor aspect of the forearm and if it is more than it is more less than 10, 5 mm then it will be negative 5 to 10 will be equivocal and more than 10 will be positive false positive cases are seen in the recent bc vaccination and the atypical infection of the mycobacterial and false negative in the hiv miliary tuberculosis malignancy and in cases of the immunosuppression and it is a type of what delayed type of hypersensitive reaction delayed type of hypersensitive reactions. Now next we'll learn about BCG vaccine that is what that is what bacillus bacillus calmatic urine vaccine very important one that is derived from That is derived from Danish 131 strain. Of mycobacterium bovis. So important question one that the B vaccine that we use is actually derived from the Danish 1331 strain of the mycobacterial bovis. And it is what it is injected intradermal. And the diluent we use for the activation is what? Normal saline. Okay. So, bacillus BCG vaccine that is derived from the Danish 1331 strain. Now, how to remember after B, we are having C and then we are having the D. And that is injected intradermal. Intradermal injection and we use the diluent that is what? Normal saline. That is what? Normal saline. And what is the efficacy is about 80%. Still 80%. Efficacy is about 80%. Alright. Now, 
remember that the tb is tb is one of the notifiable disease that the doctor will have to report that the nearest center that the tb case has been seen in its area that is the tb is a notifiable disease and serological test this mtb card test mtb card test and the mtb elisa they are what they are not used they are not used in india all right so serological card test the mtb card test and the mtb elisa they are not used in india and tb are not viable disease TB is a notifiable disease. Now, coming to the coming to the atypical atypical mycobacterial diseases, atypical mycobacteria. Okay, atypical mycobacteria. First, we'll study about the run yons classification. Run yons. Classification. Yeah, that divided the atypical mycobacteria into the photochromogens, photochromogens, all right, and into the non-chromogens and the rapid growers. First, we'll see the photochromogens. Is they grow in? They grow in. Light. that is they need the light for their metabolism that is then grow there in the light okay so photochromosomes the examples are examples can be remembered by the for some light key that is what a A S M and light is what photochromogens. So we are studying what we are studying the run yons classification. We are studying about the run yons classification that divided the atypical mycobacteria into the photochromogens, photochromogens, rapid growers, and what and what the non chromogens. Now first we'll study about the photochromogens that cousin light key that is cousin key is what is what mycobacteria can say okay we are done with k a stands for mycobacteria asiaticum s stands for mycobacteria that is what simias and mycobacteria marinum okay so that is photochromogens that is kasam light key that is light standing for the photochromogens kasam k a s m that is kansesi asiaticum simias and the marinum now coming to the next one Next is what? Next is the photochromogens. That is, they grow where they will grow in the dark. It doesn't need the light. That is the scrotochromogens. Now, examples of the scrotochromogens that is S. S and G. What was the custom light? K A S M. That is Kansasi. A for Asiaticum. S for Siemens and the M for Merinum. Here, what Scotto chromosomes? That is what S S G. And what is that S S N G? That is what Mycobacteria. Full G. Mycobacteria. Sacrophyllum. And G4 Mycobacterium gardenus. Okay, that is Kolji, 
sacrophilacium and the gordon so that is s s g all right that is we are reading about the scotochromogen scotochromogen now coming to the next that is non chromogens non chromogens that is they neither need light neither light nor darkness is required it doesn't neither light or darkness is required and that is mac that is a mycobacterium avium complex mycobacterium avium complex or mycobacteria intracellular reading about we are reading what about non chromogen that is neither light nor darkness is required first example is what mycobacterium avium complex or mycobacterium intracellular and this is also known as batis complex okay that is also known as batis bacillus or the batis complex now apart from this mycobacterium ulcerans and mycobacterium xenope okay so non chromogens that they neither need light neither they need darkness for what for the survival and mycobacterium avium complex mycobacterium ulcerans and the xenope are the examples of what non chromogens of non chromogens next is last one from the runyon's classification that is what rapid growers rapid growers all right that is mycobacterium fly mycobacteria smegmatis mycobacterium chelone mycobacterium portata okay so what are the rapid growers that is fly smegmatis these are some of the examples of the rapid growing mycobacterium rapid growing mycobacterium now what are the disease that they are causing the disease that is important one important one swimming pool swimming pool granuloma or the fish tank granuloma that is swimming pool granuloma or fish tank granuloma that is caused by what mycobacterium marinum and mycobacterium ulcerans okay so swimming pool granuloma is caused by mycobacterium marinum and the mycobacterium ulcerans now next one is guruli ulcer what guruli ulcer that is caused by due to the rapid growers that is caused by what rapid growers what is the next one post injectional post injection disease and one more that we have is most most a typical bacteria this will cause what post injectional disease that is causing the cutaneous infections other than this they also cause what lymph adenopathy so important when swimming pool granuloma or the fish tank granuloma is caused by mycobacterium marinum or the ulcerans Purely also that is what caused by what all the rapid growers. Other than this, they atypical mycobacteria cause a post 
injectional disease and atypical bacteria causing or the lymph adenopathy. Now, one point is that one point is that atypical mycobacteria, which atypical mycobacteria, which atypical mycobacteria mimics the which atypical mycobacteria mimics the MTB in the lung. Okay, so which atypical mycobacteria mimics the microbial tuberculosis in the lung? Is it what mycobacteria can test? Okay. So, atypical mycobacteria that is mimicking the mycobacterial tuberculosis in the lung is what mycobacterial can test. Now, coming next is what mycobacterium labri. Mycobacterium labri. Now, mycobacterium labri causes what? Hansen's disease. Okay. Market of of Hansen's disease. And they are not cultured. Not cultured in pure culture. They are not cultured in the pure culture media. Therefore, they doesn't follow what? They doesn't follow the coach. It doesn't follow the Koch postulate. And what was the mnemonic for that? MNT doesn't follow the Koch, that is Mycobacterium labrae, as well as what? Mycobacterium labrae, Neisseria, and the Trapenoma pallidum. They doesn't follow the Koch postulate. Doesn't follow the Koch postulate. <laughs> they grow in part of mice and they grow in foot pad of armadillo. Okay. So microbial lapre one important point is that they causes what they cause the hands they causes the Hansen's disease and they cannot be grown in the pure culture. That is, they doesn't follow the Koch postulate and they grow in the, they grow in the foot pad of the mice and the foot pad of armadillo. What we do, what test we do for the leprosy? Uh, this uh, microbiome lepre is what? Lepromin test. Lepromin test that is also what type 4 hypersensitivity test that is also what type 4 hypersensitivity test and lepromin test is what lepromin test is not a diagnostic test it is just what it is a prognostic test yeah. it is just a what prognostic test now we'll come to the theory one by one. That is, we have already seen the acid fast bacilli. We have already seen the acid fast bacilli. And the examples of the acid fast bacilli, the lepromin test, that is a lepromin test, it is what a prognostic test and not a, and it is not, it is not a what? Diagnostic test. Now, in the lepromin test, we have two types of reaction. One is what one is early lepromin reaction, that is also known as early Fernandez reaction. How to remember early E K baad F E I ka that is early lepromin reaction or Fernandez reaction. Next is what late lepromin reaction or Mitsuda. To the reaction, okay. Early lepromin reaction from the name that is, it is what it is set after three days and 
we measure what we measure the diameter of the induration all right late laprimin test or the late laprimin reaction or the mix with the reaction we read about after three week and what we see we measure what nodules diameter okay so one is what early laprimin reaction and the late laprimin reaction early is what early laprimin or the funding days late laprimin or the mix to the reaction early is read early that is after three days and we measure the in duration we measure the in duration and here we see the diameter of the nodule diameter of the nodule lapra reactions they are what two types that is type 1 lapra reaction or type 2 type 1 is a type of downgrading reaction downgrading and type 4 hypersensitivity most common feature is what edema and nerve that is involved most common is what unlearned nerve okay and talking about the type 2 lapra reaction that is what mainly it is what erythema nodosum laprosum that is Erythema nodosum, laprosum, and it is it is type three type of hypersensitive. Remember, type two lapromin reaction is type of type three hypersensitivity, and it is type three is what immune complex mediated. And we see what we see the crops of macules and nodules drops of the macules and nodules over the skin okay so lapromin reactions of two type one is type one and type two type one is what type one is a downgrading type of the reaction and it is type four hypersensitivity most common feature is what edema and the nerve that is involved ulnar nerve type two is an type of reaction and type three immune complex mediated and Macules and the nodules over the skin. Now, lapra reaction is a case of an emergency. Lapra reaction is an emergency. The drug of the choice is what glucocorticoid. It is a case of the emergency and glucocorticoid is the drug that is given. Lepra reaction is a case of emergency and we give the glucocorticoid and it can either occur spontaneously. Or can either occur spontaneously or after the treatment. Okay. So, it can either occur spontaneously or after the treatment. What are the lab diagnoses that we do? What are the lab diagnoses we do? Fit. Fit skin smear examination is done. Split skin smear examination is done and that is taken from bilateral earlobes is taken from bilateral earlobes or forehead. Most commonly it is taken from where bilateral earlobes or forehead or skin. Buttocks or 
nasal mucosal swabs okay slit skin smear examination we do what slit skin smear examination that is taken from most common they are taken from the bilateral ear lobes or the forehead or the chin mainly it is taken from the bilateral ear lobes or head or the chin or the buttocks or the nasal mucosal swabs nasal mucosal swabs other than this since they are what acid fast we can also do what z and staining we can do we do what z and staining that is same process that we add the carbol fusion to the intermittent heating and then we add 5% of the H2SO4. Add what? 5% of the H2SO4 and we then we add the methylene blue. Methylene blue. We get out background with scar bundle shape. Or globby like arrangement of lepra. Okay, so same process for the ZN staining. We add the carbol fusion, then we do the intermittent heating, and 5% of the H2SO4 is added. Then we do what? Methylene blue, get the blue background with cigar or bundle shape with globby like arrangement. Now coming to the treatment, what is the treatment that we give for the posse bacillary? Now leprosy will be dealt in detail later wise because the main topic of our concern for today was the microbiome tuberculosis. So glimpse of the lepre that we did today as well. So posse bacillary, it is D plus R that is we give out Lapson with Rifampicin for period of six months for the multi bacillary we give a dapson plus propazimine plus rifampicin. Okay, so for the posse bacillary we give dapson plus rifampicin, and for the multi bacillary we give dapson plus rifampicin plus propazimine for the period of the one year. And for the prognosis, for the prognosis of leprosy, the prognosis is good. Okay, and we measure what? We measure the percentage of the solid stained bacilli to see for the prognosis of the leprosy. Now we come to the important points that we have covered that we have covered that complex microbiome tuber complex will include the microbiome tuberculosis, the bacterium bovis, africanum, and what and microtic. Now microbiome tuberculosis they are what they are curved, long bearded, less uniformly stained less uniformly stained with rough tough and buff colonies on the algae media with euconic growth please remember this important point this one is that they show what rough buff and tough colonies and the euconic growth glycerol glycerol will enhance the growth and they show the resistance to the tch that is thiophene to carboxylic acid hydroazide Nicene and nitrate test are positive and they are pathogenic to the guinea pig but not to rabbit and plus they are obligate arrow easy to remember because we know that it is the upper lobe of the lung that is involved because they have the high oxygen perfusion all right so therefore they recite where in the upper that is the upper segment of the lobe that is they are what obligate arrow and they show the rough buff and tough colonies with the euconic growth and the glycerol will enhance the growth. M. bovis, they are what straight, short, stout, uniformly stained with smooth colonies with 
smooth colonies and how is the growth growth is what this tonic growth and the glycerol glycerol with inhibit will inhibit the growth and they are what nicene and the nitrate test negative both are equally pathogenic the colony morphology on the selective media that is the lg media and they show what they show the rough buff and tough colonies Rough colonies because they are what they are wrinkled in appearance. They are wrinkled in appearance. Buff is what they are bind. They are bind that is they are difficult to remove. And uh, this buff is due to the yellow brown color appearance. Tough because they are what tough and they are what difficult to remove. So they show what the rough buff and the tough colonies. Pathogenicity, they escape the killing by inhibiting the phagolysosome formation. Phagolysosome formation, therefore, we see the granuloma formation. And the important violence factor, the important violence factor is what? Cord factor and lipoarabinopenia. Okay. Clinical features one is the pulmonary TB. In the primary TB, mainly affects the children, and it is what? It is what? The sub Plural focus in the lower lobe of the long, long, lungs with the hilar lymphadenopathy. It is a primary complex. Bones co focus with the fibrosis and calcification if it undergoes that is known as the case complex. This is the Gohan's focus. It is what a primary lesion usually subplural and often in the mid to lower zones caused by the mycobacteria developed in the lung of the non-immune host that is usually in the child is what the horns focus that is a primary focus that is from mainly in the children rankase complex that is undergoing the calcification the combination of the calcific lesion of the lung and the lymph node is what the rankase complex so you can see the calcification of the lung and the lymph node is known as the rankase complex post primary tb that mainly affects the adults and that is we see in the upper lobe lungs and that is the simon focus simon's focus and the asmens focus lymph node spread rare hematogen spread is seen and the cavitations intraclavicular lesions if are present they are what asmens focus so post primary tb we are having two focus one is the Simon's focus, Asman's focus. So post primary TB is affecting what adult. Okay. So you can remember it that Simon adult with Asman focus. Okay. That is a Simon's focus mainly in the adult in the post primary TB and the Asman's focus. So this is what Asman's focus. Now. Extra pulmonary TB, the most common lymph node is what the cervical lymph node and the skeleton TB, it is a site, it is a spine that is involved. But in case of GI, it is the ileocecal junction is the most common and pericarditis is most common cause of the con constructive pericarditis is the TB pericarditis. Sacrophyllodermal skin lesion, all right, and that is the most common skin lesion is what? Lupus vulgaris. Most common TB skin lesion is what lupus vulgaris followed by what sacrophylloderma. Okay, so remember these important MCQs that in the GI TB it is the ileocecal thicker ileum that is the most common involved. Most common lymph node cervical and in the skeleton it is a spine and the most common TB skin, it is the lupus vulgaris followed by the sacrophyllotum. The body diagnosis, we do the decontamination and the concentration procedure. That is, we need to remember is what? Petrov's method by using Petrov's method by using what? 4% of the NH. All right, other than this, we also can use the N acetylcysteine and the oxalic acid. Decontamination and concentration method we use what Petrov's method. Remember the name that is we are using the Petrov's method for the concentration and the decontamination of sputum. All right, and 
Now, process is not important to remember. Just remember the name that is a Petrov's method. Now, Zn staining. Since they are acid fast bacilli, we do want the Zn staining to detect the detect the mycobacteria. Now, we use what we use the 20% of the H2SO4. Used for monitoring the treatment and two sputum samples are collected. Important one, one is the spot and one is the early morning sputum. Early morning sputum. Okay? Method of the choice case finding for the TB under RNTCP is what? Z and staining. Acid alcohol is used that is H. SO4 is used as a decolorizer for the renal TB to differentiate from the MTB because mycobacterial tuberculosis is for both acid and the alcohol fast and in the alcohol we are having the 95% of the alcohol with 5% of the HSO4 from the m magmatis that is only acid fast not alcohol fast. So remember, mycobacterium tuberculosis is both alcohol and acid, and other atypical mycobacteria are only acid fast, not alcohol fast. Oramin rhodamine stain is the more rapid method. And what is the procedure? You already see we apply the primary stain that is a carbol fusel, then do we do the intermittent heating, then we decolorize with the 20% of the H2. SO4 and allow the counter stain that is the methylene blue. So they retain the uh, they retain the stain and they appear the acid fast against the against what the blue background. So is how they appear. These are the mycobacterium tuber this mycobacteria tuberculosis and uh, they are what they are retaining the primary stain and uh, doesn't allow the uh, stain to actually they retain the stain against the dark background and it is due to the presence of the mycolic acid in the cell wall. Oramin rhodamine staining that is under fluorescence. This is what fluorescence based stain that is to see for the MTB. Culture detection limit is 10 to 100 viable organisms. Incubation is about 6 to 8 weeks and generation time hours. Alright, sputum culture facilities available at district and the regional center only done for the symptomatic and for the smear negative patient the solid media that we use is the lg media important when an egg is used egg based media please remember it is egg based media that is the solid media that we used and other than this name of the medias are important to remember that lg media 7H11, 7H10, they and is it is actually they are also the solid media. Liquid media, what is the liquid media that we use is middle group 7H9, Dubois, Proshkur, Sula, and Sotum. Just remember the names of the media that we're using for the MTB LJ media 7H10 and 11 and the blood based media they all are the solid media that we are using for what the mtb liquid media that is 7 h9 dubois sula sotone that is used for water liquid media automated culture method we use one is the back tech that is radiomatic detection of the co2 using the carbon label substrate back back alert method that is the calorimetric detection ESP, MGIT and the septic check system now this is the labrum uh, this is what the Montex test or the tuberculin test that we do and we measure the by the by the induration by the induration that is the hardness over the skin now the reaction should be measured in millimeters. The reader should not measure the erythema. The diameter of induration is measured from the flexor aspect of the forearm. IGRA based method. We remembered what is IGRA. That is interferon gamma release assay. And we check for what? We check for the interferon gamma that has been released by the stimulated T cells by the antigen of the microbe. So drawback is that we cannot differentiate the acute or the latent TB. 
इंटरफ्यूम गामा एस ए बेस आर टी वन स्पेसिफिक एंटीजन इट इज हाईली स्पेसिफिक एंड नो फॉर्स पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव रिएक्शन दैट इज आर डी वन स्पेसिफिक एंटीजन रिस्क ग्रुप्स फॉर होम द ए टी टी इज रिकमेंडेड कट ऑफ फॉर द ट्यूबिकल इन इज फॉर हु आर द रिस्क ग्रुप्स फॉर होम द एंटी ट्यूबिकल इन टॉक्सर प्रोफाइलिक्स इज रिकमेंडेड वन वी ऑब्वियसली नो इज आर द एच आई वी इन्फेक्टेड पर्सन बिकॉज वन इज एट दे आर रिसीविंग द इम्यूनो सप्रेसिव थेरेपी द इम्यूनिटी इज सप्रेस एंड टी इज वॉट एंड वन ऑफ द अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक क्लोज कॉन्टेक्ट विद द टी बी पेशेंट स्पेसिफिकली चिल्ड्रन एंड पर्सन विद द लीजन ऑन द चेस्ट रेडियोग्राफी विद मोर देन फाइव एम एल or the person who is within infected within 2 years and with induration of more than 10 mm person with the high risk conditions with more than 10 mm induration and what is hematological disease and the drug users with more than 10 mm if the low risk person but the induration is what more than 15 mm otherwise treatment is not recommended for the low risk person with more than 15 mm Or so these are the cutoff values for the tubercle in test. If the person is HIV, we have to give ATT prophylaxis. Close contact children, we have to give ATT prophylaxis. With the chest radiography of more than five, uh, with the chest radiography and more than five mm uh, tubercle in test, we have to give ATT prophylaxis. Recently infected person with more than 10 mm. Person with the high risk medical conditions and the drug users more than 10 mm and the low risk with more than 50 mm. we have to give att prophylaxis So BCG, what does a BCG stands for? It is basically calmated urine. That is BCG, and the strain that we use is what Ambovis strain, that is attenuated in the glycerol bile potato media. And remember, it is a Danish. It is a Danish one three three one strain for the BCG, and it is prepared in India where in the Chennai. BCG is available in the lipophilized form. Has therefore, it has to be reconstituted because what we use the diluent here, we use normal saline. Distilled water is not used. We use what normal dose and the strength we already read. It is point one mL containing what point one mg. Eu alcohol is not used to wipe the skin and the site is about the. Insertion of the deltoid root is what ID root that is intradermal root and what is we read about after two to three weeks we read about the induration and after five to six weeks we see what we see for the uh, papule shallow ulcer covered with a crust six to twelve weeks permanently scar and after eight to four weeks context test will test will become positive so we have to remember this that five to six Six to twelve and eight to fourteen. Five to six, we'll see what the ulcer covered with the crust. Then there will be permanent scar, and then Montex test will come positive. So remember it that VPM that is what means UPM that is what ulcer permanent scar and the Montex test positive that is six, twelve and fourteen. So that is five to six weeks, six to twelve and eight to fourteen weeks. That is six, twelve and fourteen. Up to eighty percent there is what FKC and the complication is what ulceration and the indication is that BCG is given to newborns after the birth and no need after to your strategy for the most of the developing countries. So what we have to remember UPM that is ulcer 
then what permanent scar and then what montex text will be positive that is 6 12 and 14 b in that bcg bcg is given after performing the tuberculin test recommended after one year bcg is indirectly that is the bcg is also the bcg is given just after birth but b is given after performing the tuberculin test is not indirect bcg BCG to sensitize individual might result in local complication. Contraindication are the HIV positive or the AFB positive mother. Other strains that we can use for the BCG. The complications are the HIV positive mother or AFB positive mother or the immunity has been decreased of the person with uh, advanced pregnancy and the malignancy. These are the intact BCG. That is, BCG is given after performing the tuberculin test. We are not directly giving the BCG. This is what the indirect BCG. Other BCG strains other than Danish 151 strain we use can use the Montreal as Sanofi Tokyo 172 strains. Now, sensitive testing. Drug resistance main mechanism is due to mutation. Main mechanism is due to mutations and genes involved. What are the main mechanisms? What are the methods by which we can do the sensitive testing? By resistance ratio, absolute concentration, by proportion method, RNTPCP that is recommended, radiometric method or molecular method. So by these methods, we can sensitive for, do the sensitive testing. The drug resistance is due to in INH, it is due to the CAT gene mutation or or inh a gene mutation in the rifampicin it is rpo gene mutation all right that is in that it is the what pnca pyrazinamidase that is in pyrazinamide it is a pyrazinamidase enzyme pnca mutation all right ethambutol it is what emb abc mutation and in the last one is the ribosomal protein subunit 12 mutation Now, MDR-TB, what is MDR-TB? That it is resistant to, is resistant to both INH with isoetazole as well as rifampicin. First line drug that is INH and the rifampicin or resistant to other first line drug. Okay? So, it is what resistance to INH and rifampicin. 3.7% of our new cases are MDR-TB and the prevalence in the treated cases is up to 20%. Mainly seen in the countries Russia, Russia and the Brazil and the China. So remember what is MDR that is resistant to the first line drug mainly to the INH and Rampicin. XDR that is what XDR is what resistance to Quinilone, along with the first line drug, we also see the resistance toward quinilones or the amine glycosides. Okay, 95% of the MDRs are the HDR TB. So it is what resistance to the first line drug with the resistance to the second line drug that is quinilones and the amino glycosides. Now, neonatal tuberculosis before delivery if before delivery mother chest x-ray and the sputum are positive the mother is given att that is prophylaxis after delivery if mother chest x-ray and sputum are positive then three dos are done if before delivery mother is positive in both the x-rays and the afp att is given if, if after delivery it is positive then mother to be given att plus bb is given isoniazid with all that is 9 to 12 months and the screening of all the contacts screening of all the household contacts mother as well baby is taken care of mother is given ATT and the baby is given what INH for 9 to 12 months what are what we should not be do that is don't separate the baby from the mother and don't withhold the breastfeeding don't give to baby BCG Okay, so what is the in case of the neonatal tuberculosis we need to do that before delivery if the mother x-ray and the AFP both are positive ATT is given after delivery mother both x-ray and the AFP is positive then mother is given ATT baby is given INH and the mother and baby are not separated that is we continue the breastfeeding and we don't give BCG to, BCG to the 
Phoebe. So this was uh, it about the today's session that is a mycobacteria we learned about we learned about that uh, mycobacteria is acid fast vessel due to the presence of the important points that is We learned about one is that they are acid fast bacilli and it is due to the presence of the mycolic acid and they ability to resist the what decolorization they have the ability to resist the what the acid and we what use 20 percent of the h2so4 and five percent of the h2so4 for what lab prey and for the mycobacterial tb second point is that we remember the virulence factor that is too important pod factor and lipoarabino manner that is the important virulence factor for the mycobacteria and we remember that in the children in the children it is the lower lobe that is mainly involved and the bones focus and the rankase complex bones focus uh, calcification will lead to a rankase complex in the post primary tb it is a mainly adult and he will present with the upper lobe lesion and we read about that simon is adult with asmens focus that is simon's focus and the asmens focus that we seen in the post primary tb other than this in the that is the most common primary skin lesion is what most common primary skin lesion is what lupus vulgaris with sacrophiloderma sacrophiloderma and in the gi in the gi tb it is ileocecal junction that is the most common in case of the spine it is what most common is the spine tb all right and then this we read about we read about other uh, diagnosis that is one is a sputum examination we did the zn staining zn staining carbol fusion then intermittent heating or uske baad apnone kya kya tha that we did what we add the 20 percent of the acid and that is a decolorizer and the uh, methyl blue methyl blue stain that is we gave uh, gave to uh, added and uh, we saw that the uh, background was blue with the pink colored bacilli Selective media. Selective media is what the LJ media that is the egg based media. Is ke allow what else solid media we used? We used 7, H, 10 and 11. Liquid media we used 7, H, 9 and the dorset medias. All right. And the colony formation was rough, buff and tough colonies because we saw the wrinkled colonies that were adherent and difficult to remove and they were tough colonies that is they were difficult to remove buff colonies they were yellow brown colonies all right apart from this we did the uh, line prop assays pcr techniques gene expert techniques and the cbna techniques and one important is igra based technique that is what interferon gamma release assay and we checked for the interferon gamma because the stimulated t lymphocytes release what interferon gamma and we check the sensitivity of the interferon gamma drawback is that we could not differentiate the active and the uh, latent mycobacterium tuberculosis other than this igra we have done oramine rhodamine staining that is a fluorescence based staining more rapid than a zn staining we did for the mtb now Tuberculin test, we read about the tuberculin test that is what the Montox test and we check for the induration 0.1 ml of PP, PPD on the flexor aspect of the forearm. Less than 5 is not, 5 is not significant, negative 5 to 10 was equivocal and more than 10 is what positive. False positive was seen in case if had a person had the recent BCG vaccination or atypical mycobacterial cases and the false negative in case of the HIV pregnancy, uh, malignancy, miliary TB and the immunosuppression cases. Alright, 
and uh, next was they use the bcg vaccine bcg vaccine that is uh, we actually use the danish 1331 strain and it was it was mainly uh, uh, the mycobacterial bo from the mycobacterial bovis that we acquired the bcg vaccination the dilent that we used the dilent that we used was the normal saline and up to 80% of the efficacy we saw up to the 80% of the efficacy all right in the case of the atypical we read about the photochromogens how we remembered kasam light ki that is kasam light ki that is light is that they need light that is they are photochromogens kasam that is a mycobacterium cancer asiaticum as for what uh, as for semias that is mycobacterium semias and the merinum Marinum, okay? Next was the scotochromogens that is they require what the darkness scotochromogens that is a SSG and what was the SSG was standing for that is a J sacrophylloderma and the sacrophyllaceum and what G for what G for mycobacterium corne. All right. Other than this, we had what the non chromogens that is, it neither required light nor required darkness. And what example was the mycobacterium avium complex non chromogens that is, mycobacterium avium complex that is also known as the batis, batis bacillus, and that is mycobacterium ulcerans and xenope. Okay. So this was scotochromogens and the non chromogens and the rapid growers and what rapid growers okay what was the rapid growers were that were that were microbiotic fly and the smegmatis what we needed to remember was the swimming pool granuloma or the fish tank granuloma that is caused by the mycobacteria mycobacterium marinum that is swimming pool granuloma that is called by the mycobacterium marinum and mycobacterium ulcerans okay that is a swimming pool granuloma now other than this other than this is the buruli ulcer buruli ulcer that is caused by the due to the rapid growers due to the rapid growers all right mycobacterium lapre when we talked about the mycobacterium lapre that is one it is an exception of the Koch postulate second point we needed to remember that it causes what Hansen's disease it causes what Hansen's disease and the lapromin test we did Lapromin test uh, that we reaction saw the two type of reaction early and the late early ek bat f that is fun and days late it's mitsuda and we check for the nodules after three weeks early is early that is after three days we check for the in duration lapra reaction also two types one and two type one is what type four hypersensitivity reaction and it is what the arrhythmia is the common symptom and the all all nerve is in, in, involved Type 2 lepra reaction is what? It is what? Type uh, 3 hypersensitivity reaction. And we saw for the macules and the nodules. And it is also known as the arrhythmia nodosum leprosum. Uh, lepra reaction can also occur spontaneously or after the treatment. And the drug we give is the glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids. And how do we do the diagnosis for the microbiome lepra? That is, we do for the slit smear examination that we take from the bilateral ear lobes followed by the forehead and the chin, followed by the nasal mucosa and the buttocks. Other than this, we can do the ZN staining, same process, we add the carbol fuchsia, we do the intermittent heating, then we do, then we add what the 5% of the H2SO4 and the methylene blue, and the methylene blue. All right, for the treatment, for the possibility, we added, we added what DR, that is, the dapson and the rifampicin and for the multibacillary that we did for the, the dcr that is dapson tofazamine and the rifampicin okay so we are done uh then with what we're done with the mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, please do 
my code that is muskan 10 to get 10% of the discount thank for today's session please press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we are about to take the class and you'll get the notification to like share subscribe and follow me on the academy channel and the academy app so use my code that is muskan 10 to get 10% of the discount i will see you soon at the same time and tomorrow's session and we'll start the revision session tomorrow is a revision first revision session for the microbiology for the coming examination So until that, take care and bye-bye.